Greetings to all of you. I'm Hasini Lakshman Arayanan, and this is my topic. I can change the climate change. I would usually love to start my talk with a short story, and that's the same what I'm going to do today as well. So this is a very common story which I believe uh, most of us would have heard when we were toddlers: the hare and the tortoise story. So the hare and the tortoise decides to run in a race. By logic, the hare is comparatively fast than the tortoise, so it is, let's say, might be a little overconfident that it would win the race. Now, I have a small question: Whom do you think would win the race? Is it the tortoise or the hare, and why? Now, if you already know the story, you might know that the tortoise wins the race. But uh, by logic, it should have been the hare. Uh, the story says that the hare sleeps in between, takes a break, waiting for the tortoise to show up. But meanwhile, the tortoise wins the race, even though it took small steps. And if you're wondering how, even though the tortoise was apparently slow, it was consistent and never stopped. In the other way around. The hare was pretty fast compared to the tortoise, but took a break. It's not about how you how fast or slow you are. It's always about how consistent you are, and that's where the first step begins. So uh, today, um, you know, I have um, reality checks, and as I mentioned, I'll be pitching on. i can change the climate change and what today's youth can possibly do and to begin with i have a sanskrit sloka dasa kupa samavapi dasa vapi samo harandra dasa handa sama putrom dasa putro samo dramuha so um, it means one step is equal to 10 wells one pond is equal to 10 steeples One sun is equal to ten ponds, and one tree is equal to ten suns. It's self-explanatory. Uh, I don't think there is any explanation required in here. My further uh, presentations would be on a reality check on what humans are leading nature into, how it was before. Uh, have we done something which is beneficial for nature, or have we done something totally opposite to it? So I name it as the reality check. Uh, as you all might know our ancestors built and maintained water bodies they built lakes ponds and this was helpful in probably every direction the soil was fertile it was uh, helpful to you know cultivate possibly any crop and there are many more other resources where it was helpful to but the previous generation destroyed water bodies and started building houses on top of them and you might wonder this probably only resulted into water scarcity no it has caused so many problems and one single example which i can give is you know water wear in houses in the 2015 and 2021 floods in chennai and the only reason is because there weren't many water bodies which were in extent 20 to 30 years ago and to relate to a quote about the previous slide which is very famous in internet today you might or might not know this so here it is for you Our grandparents saw water in rivers and ponds. Our father saw it in wells. We see it in taps. Our children will see it in bottles. Where will our grandchildren see it in? Will it be seen in capsules? If we still misuse it, it'll only be seen in tears. Now, this is just a myth, but if we closely notice and analyze, that's the same scenario which is being performed and which is being happening, right? India's literacy rate in 1951 was just 18.33 percent, but in 2001 it grew up to 65.38 percent. Now, 21 years later, now in 2022, I'm pretty sure that it's even more huge. But then, even after people getting educated, they dump raw sewage in rivers in water bodies. Now, this might. carry forward the uh, you know all waste materials leave it out to the sea the three sea creatures there get affected and the whole habitat is being polluted 
around 80% of India's water is severely polluted because people dump raw sewage and silt and garbage into the country's rivers and lakes. To give you all one small example, there is a river called the Adyar River in Chennai. Today it's being called the Kuam River, which is full of sewage water. Not only water pollution, but out of the 30 most polluted cities in the world, 21 among them are in India and this survey is as of in 2019. And the 13 of the world's 20 cities with highest annual levels of air pollution are in India. People um, in Delhi have started selling flavoured oxygen and is this even a good uh, achievement to cherish? Not only this, but air pollution causes premature deaths of 2 million Indians every year. And if you're wondering, uh, you know, general people, how can we possibly do air pollution? It's the factories and industries who produce smoke. Even your smallest action could pollute. Probably using a vehicle for short distance traveling could also pollute the nature. Now, um, you know, people say it's the society, it's developed this way. We are all used to, you know, the nature getting polluted. People give talks and, you know, they spread awareness. But not at all. It's not the society. Let me tell you, let's all think differently I mean, for a minute. What is society? Who is society? We individuals together is being addressed as society, right? What if we change? What if the change begins with us? And the society changes following us and the world becomes a better place. That's how it should be carried forward, right? So that's, all, that's why I always say for things to change, I must change first. And uh, that should be the motto of today's humans. And now I'd want to uh, pitch a little bit about environmental management, how we can sustain the um, resources which are being left out. Firstly, sustainability. Uh, sustainability would not much help in bringing back the resources which are being polluted, but can definitely help preserving the resources which are left out for the next generations to explore. Leading a sustainable life can be done even in our smallest actions uh, by reducing electricity, by using solar panels which are apparently earthly friendly, by using less water and also by uh, you know, avoiding plastics as much as possible. Secondly, the sustainable development goals or SDG goals which are approved by the UN which are set to be achieved by 2013. Now, me and my friends and many more other youth have started taking initiatives to uh, achieve these SDG goals and have started spreading more awareness. And with the help of all of you, I believe that we'll be able to achieve all the 17 goals by 2030. And one biggest power which I believe all of us have got today is youth. India's 39% of population is youth and why not bring in youth empowerment in here, which exactly is my idea, which is to empower youth. With our all support, I'm pretty sure we can lead a sustainable life and preserve all of the resources which are left out for the next generations to explore. Now, this is a little something about me. I'm Hasini Lakshman Narayanan, studying in Chetanad Vidya from Chennai, India. I started the first step, which is a non-profit organization when I was 12 years old. I am a freelance writer for the Hindu School Edition and honorary advisor for the Child Chapter India and I'm soon to be an author. And um, what we do is we are on a mission to empower children, as I already mentioned. I have about 100 plus children, which I address youth ambassadors. Together, we do a lot of activities, spreading awareness, performing deeds to achieve the SDG goals. And we also create inspirational content, posting them on pretty much all social medias. And we have our own website where we post our blogs. Few initiatives which I've done myself, inspiring, um, getting inspired by the people whom I've interviewed is um, firstly, I want to mention about Vinisha Uma Shankar. She is being addressed as a solar ironing cart girl. Prasiddhi Singh, uh, Pras uh, she's the founder of the Prasiddhi Forest Foundation. Nihal Tamanna, who runs an organization called the Recycle My Battery. Now, there are many more other children 
who play a vital role in spreading awareness and these three people whom i have mentioned here have been one powerful resource for today's youth to being inspired and so as i am one uh, among them by getting inspired to these people um, i started doing uh, seminars and sessions in schools and colleges on spreading awareness about sdg goals I did an event uh, in my channel called uh, "The Person Who Saved the Mother Earth," inviting four young environmentalists and two speakers who are very much talented and who have achieved, who are successful in their fields of uh, protecting Mother Earth. I conducted a um, 24 hour challenge on 5th of December 2021. in association with the MUN impact called the 100k reach challenge where we encourage children from various schools and colleges from various forums to perform deeds in order for us to achieve the sdg goals and recently i was uh, recognized as a recipient of the global sustainable awards 2021 so um before i can conclude i just want to say that um you know it's our responsibility to sustain and preserve the resources let's say um you know if you own a house you rent it for somebody else they pretty much damage everything which is being there and would you ever feel comfortable living back in that house not at all right so this is just humans um, view but if we closely notice the earth doesn't belong to anybody it's not our property uh, the previous generation might have spoiled it but the next generation is just exploring what is being left out we just have one and let's preserve as much as we could so um, i request you all to pledge along with me for things to change i must change first and that change begins with your soul your house leading forward to the society the earth becomes a better place Thank you so much for the opportunity signing off it's me Hasini Lakshmi Narayanan